good wishes to all of you india's ancient past chapter 23 crafts commerce and urban growth 200 bc2 and romney 250 audio book crafts and craftsmen Although a substantial number of non-producing people concentrated in the cities, the age of the Shakas, Kushanas, Shatavahanas, 200 BC to Anno Domini 250, and the first Tamil states was the most flourishing period in the history of crafts and commerce in ancient India. Arts and crafts, in particular, witnessed remarkable growth. We do not hear of so many kinds of artisans in the earlier texts as are mentioned in the writing of the period the dignikaya relates to the pre mauryan times mentioned nearly two dozen occupations but the mahavatsu relates to this period categorizes 36 kinds of workers living in the town of dasgir and the list is not uh, exhaustive the milinda panho or the questions of milinda enumerates as many as 75 occupations 60 of which are connected with various crafts tamil text known in english as the garland of madurai supplements information supplied by the two buddhist texts on crafts and craftsmen This text does not distinguish between craftsmen and shopkeepers according to it many artisans work in their shops including painters weavers clothiers florists goldsmith and coppersmith such artisan shopkeepers were found in both urban and rural areas but in the literary texts craftsmen are mostly associated with towns some excavations indicate that they also inhabited villages in a village settlement in karim nagar uh, in telangana carpenters blacksmiths goldsmiths potters like uh, lived in separate quarters agriculture and other laborers lived at uh, one end eight crafts were associated with the working of uh, gold silver lead tin copper brass iron precious stones or jewels various types of crafts associated with the brass drink anatomy red arsenic also mentioned this indicates great advance and specialization in mining and metallurgy technological knowledge about iron work had made great pro- progress and iron artifacts have been discovered in large numbers in kushan iron artifacts discovered large numbers in kushan and shatavahana layers at a central excavator excavator sites telangana region of andhra seems to have been the richest in this respect and in addition to weapons balance rods socketed axes and hoists sickles flexures razors and ladles have been discovered in karimnagar and nalgonda district of this region indian iron and steel including kaltri were exported to the abyssinian ports and they enjoyed great pressure in western asia techniques of cloth making silk weaving and the manufactures of arms and luxury articles also developed madura was a great center for the manufacture of a special type of cloth which was called shataka Dyeing was a thriving craft in some south indian towns a brick built a dyeing vat has been unearthed at uriyar suburb of tirucharpalli town in tamil nadu and similar dyeing vats were excavated at Ar- arikamedu these structures relate to the first third centuries when the handloom textile industry in these towns flourished the manufacture of oil increased because of the use of the oil wheel inscriptions of the period mention weavers goldsmiths dyers workers in metal and ivory jewelers sculptors fishermen smiths and perfumers as uh, constructors of caves and also as donors of pillars tablets 
cisterns, etc. To the Buddhist monks, this suggests that their craft were flourishing. Of the handicrafts meant for manufacturing luxury articles, a waterwork, a glass manufacture, and bead cutting may be mentioned. The shell industry was thriving. Many products of crafts have been found as a result of digging in the Kushana complexes. Indian ivories have been found in Afghanistan and Rome. Indian ivories have been found in Afghanistan and Rome. They are likened on likened to ivory objects found in excavations at Shatwahana in the Deccan. Roman glass objects are found in Taxila and in Afghanistan. But it was around the beginning of the Christian era that the knowledge of glass blowing reached India and attained its peak. Similarly, large numbers of pairs of semi-precious stones have been found in post-Maurya la layers, which show numerous beads and bangles made of shell. Coin minting was an important craft, and the period is noted of uh, numerous types of coins made of gold, silver, copper, bronze, lead, glass, and potin. The craftsmen also made fake Roman coins. Various coin molds relating to the period have been found in both North India and in the Deccan. A coin mold from a Shatwahana level shows that it could turn, turn out half a dozen coins at a time. The Greeks, Shekas, Shatwahanas, and Kushanas. All contributed to the spread of coins. However, it if we go by the coin collection in museums, it appears that the Shatavahanas issued the largest number. Even those dynasties which ruled for short periods issued a large number of coins. This is the case with the indo sasanians whose coins are found in half a dozen museums including the British Museum. Coin moulding and other urban handicrafts were supplemented by the manufacture of beautiful pieces of terracotta which abound at uh, several places. They have been found at almost all the Kushana and Shatwahana sites. But uh, Elishwaram in Nalgonda district uh, deserves special mention. There is the largest number of uh, terracotta and uh, molds in which they were manufactured have been excavated. Terracottas and their molds are also found at uh, Kondapur, located about 65 kilometers from Hyderabad, terracottas were used largely by the upper class in towns. It is significant that the, that with the decline of towns in the Gupta and especially in post Gupta period, such terracottas virtually went out of fashion. Artisans were organized into guilds which were called shrenis. In the 2nd century, an Oromni in Maharashtra, lay devotees of Buddhism deposited money with the guilds of potters, oilmen and weavers to provide the monks uh, with the robes and other necessities. During the same century, money was deposited by a chief with the guild of floor makers at Mathura so that its monthly income could daily feed a hundred brahmanas. On the basis of different types, we can say that artisans of this period were organized into at least two dozen guilds. Most artisans know from inscriptions were conformed to the Mathura region and to Western Deccan, which lay on the trade routes leading to the ports on the western coast. Types of Merchants The garland of Madurai calls street, street broad rivers of people who buy and sell in marketplace. The importance of shopkeepers is indicated by the repetition of the term Apanna in the description of the city of Sha Sakala. Its shops appear as filled with various types of cloth made in Kashi, Kothumbara, and elsewhere. Many artisans and merchants were organized into guilds called Shreni and Ayatana. But how these organizations function is indicated neither in the Mahavastu nor the Milinda Panho. But both merchants and 
craftsmen were divided into high, low, and middle ranks. In the Buddhist text mentioned the Sreshti, who was the chief merchant of the Nigama, and her Sartavaha caravan leader, who was the head of the corporation of merchants, Vanis Gramu. It also speaks of nearly half a dozen petty merchants called Vanisa. They dealt in fruits, roots, cooked food, sugar, bark, cloth, shivo, sheaves of corn or grass, and bamboo. We also hear of many shopkeepers in a Tamil text. They sold sweet cakes, scented powder, fetal quids, and flower garlands. These merchants thus met the varied needs of the urban folk, including food, clothing, and housing. To them, we can add perfumers or all-purpose merchants called Gandhika. Remember this, perfumes or all-purpose merchants called Gandhika. On the starting of the only perfumers are called as Gandhika. Remember this. After it was continued for the old merchants and shopkeepers too. Various types of oil men, some of them dealing in performed oils, are covered by the term. The term Vyavahari, that is, one who transacts business, is also used. But the term Vyapari, order or trader, seems to be missing. The term Agrivanija seems to be obscure, uh, but these merchants may have been the producers of the Agarwalas if we follow for some linguistic cha change. Uh, remember, you have to underline the, these words properly because uh, some of the prelims, of, pre uh, prelims point of your questions were asked about this. Whatever may be the meaning of this term, there were certainly wholesale merchants uh, who conducted both internal and uh, external trade, trade routes and centers. The most important economic development of the period was the thriving trade between India and the Eastern Roman Empire. Initially, a substantial amount of this trade was conducted overland by the movement of the Shakas, Pratiharans, Kushanas disrupted overland trade. Although the uh, Parthians of Iran imported iron and steel from India, they presented great obstacles to India's trade with the land further west of Iran. However, since the 1st century AD trade was conducted mainly by sea, it seems that around the beginning of the Christian era, the monsoon was understood and this enabled sailors or to sail in much less time directly from the eastern coast of the Arabian Sea to the western coast and easily call at the various ports along the route such as Broch and Sopra situated on the western coast of India. I am repeating this again. Uh, please note it's important. Monsoon was understood and this enabled sailors to sail in much less time directly from the eastern coast of the Arabian Sea to western coast and easily call the various ports along the route such as Broch and Sopara situated on the western coast of India. Arikamedu and Tam Tamralipti situated on the eastern coast of all these ports. Boats seems to have uh, have been the most important uh, prosperous. Two, it was brought on, on not only commodities produced in the Shatvahana kingdom but also the goods product produced in the Shakas and Kushana kingdom. The Shakas and the Kushanas used two routes from the northwestern frontier to the western sea coast. Both these routes covered at Taxila and were connected with the Silk Road passing through Central Asia. The first route directly ran from the north to south. If you are uh, 
seeing the map it is very much uh, useful for the understanding of these topics linking taxila with a lower indus basin from where it passed on to broch second route called uttar path uh, was in more frequent use taxila it passed through modern punjab up to the eastern bank of the yamuna following the course of the yamuna it went southward in mathura from mathura passing on to ujjain in malwa and again from ujjain to broch on the western coast ujjain was the meeting point of another route which started from kaushambi near alhabad goods in foreign trade although the volume of trade between india and rome seemed to have been large it was not conducted in articles of daily use for the common people there was a brisk commerce in luxury goods which are sometimes called articles of home. aristocratic necessities romans first started a trade with the southernmost part of india as their earliest coins are found in the tamil kingdoms which lay outside the shatvahana dominance the romans mainly imported species for which south india was famous and also muslin pearls jewels precious stones from central and south india iran goods especially cutlery formed an important item of export the roman empire pearls ivory precious stones and animals was considered luxuries but plants and plant producers served the basic religious funerary culinary and medicinal needs of the people kitchen where may have been included the items of import and cutlery may have been imported for the higher class of people in addition to the goods directly supplied by india certain articles were brought to india from china and uh, central asia then passed on the the eastern part of the roman empire silk was directly sent from china to the roman empire via the silk route passing through north afghanistan and iran if we uh, have the idea of the ncert books we can see the silk route uh, maps on that however the establishment of the pratiharan rule in iran and the neighboring areas created difficulties therefore silk had to be diverted to the western india ports through the northwestern part of the subcontinent sometimes it also found its way from china to the east coast of indo sometimes it also found its way from china to the east coast of india and from there went to the west thus there was considerable tra- transit trade in silk between india and the roman empire in return for the articles exported by india to the roman empire the romans exported to india wine romans exported to india wine wine amphorae and various other types of pottery which were discovered in excavations at um, tamluk in west bengal arkamedu near pondicherry and uh, at several other sites in south india sometimes roman goods traveled as far as guwahati lead which was used for making coins by the shatvahanas seems to have been imported from rome in the form of coiled strips the roman goods do not appear in any substantial quantities in north india roman goods do not appear in any substantial quantities in north india but there is no doubt that under the kushanas north western part of the subcontinent in the second century traded with the eastern part of the roman empire this was facilitated by the conquest of uh, mesopotamia which was made a roman province in ad 115 the roman emperor trajan not only conquered uh, muscat but also explored the persian gulf as a result of trade and conquest the roman goods reached afghanistan and north western india at uh, begram 72 km north of kabul large glass jars made in italy 
Egypt and Syria have have been found. Also found the were balls, bronze stands, steel yards, and weights of Western Ocean. Small Greco Roman bronze statues, jugs, and other vessels made of alabaster, taxila, which is quarter minus with a modern sirkap in the northwest frontier province of Pakistan. has yielded fine examples of the greco roman sculpture in bronze silver ornaments are some bronze pots one jar coins of the roman emperor tiberius were also found however aratine pottery which is regularly found in south india appears neither in central or western india nor in afghanistan evidently these places did not receive popular western articles which have been found mostly south of vindhyas the shatavahana's kingdom and further south thus a kingdom of kingdoms of both the shatavahana's and kushana's profited from trade with the roman empire although the largest profit seems to have occurred to the shatavahana's The most significant Roman export to India was the large number of coins, invariably made of gold and silver. Though some Roman copper coins are also found, about 150 finds of Roman coins appear in the subcontinent as a whole, and most of them from the south of the Vindhyas. The total number of Roman gold and silver coins that have been I'm sorry to disturb the bit of meter. from south of the vindhyas the total number of roman gold and silver coins that have been found in india does not exceed 6000 but it is difficult to see that only this number of coins came from rome the number seems to have been much larger this justifies the complaint of the roman writer pliny who wrote his account called natural history in latin in anno domini 77 he believed that rome was being drained of gold on account of its trade with india this may be an exaggeration but uh, as early as 822 we hear of complaints against against excessive expenditure on uh, the purchases of pepper from the east as westerns were very fond of uh, indian pepper it is called uh, yavana priya in sanskrit there was also a strong reaction against the use of indian made steel cutlery for which the roman nobles paid very high prices the concept of the balance of trade may not have been unknown but numerous finds of roman coins and pottery in the peninsula live do not Oh, sorry no doubt that india was a gainer in its trade with the roman empire the loss of roman money was so deeply felt that eventually steps had to be taken in rome to ban its trade with india in paper and steel goods remember this thing uh, the loss of roman money was so deep deeply felt uh, that eventually steps had to be taken in rome to ban its trade with india in paper and steel goods It appears that a major role in the Indo-Roman trade and shipping played by the Romans. Although Roman traders lived in South India, there is a little evidence of Indian residents in the Roman Empire. Some uh, portraits with uh, graffiti in Tamil suggest that some Tamil merchants lived in Egypt in Roman times. Money economy. How did the Indians use a silver and gold currency which came to India from Rome? The Roman gold coins were naturally valued for their intrinsic worth, but they may also have circulated in major transaction. In the north, the Indo Greeks, in the north, the Indo Greeks rulers issued a few gold coins, but the Kushanas issued gold coins in considerable numbers. It is wrong to think uh, that all Kushana gold coins were minted out of Roman gold. 
As early as the 5th century BC, India had paid a tribute of 320 talents of gold to the Iranian empire. This gold may have been extracted from the gold mines in Sindh. The Kushanas probably obtained gold from Central Asia and may also have procured it either from Karnataka from the gold mines of Um Dalbum in Jharkhand which later came under their sway on account of the contact with Rome the Kushanas issued the dinar dinar type of gold coins became abundant under the Gupta rule gold coins may not uh, however have been used in day to day transactions which were carried on in coins of lead potin or copper both lead and copper deposits are found in andhra and gold deposits in karnataka andhra has issued a large number of lead or potin coins in the deccan also shatavahanas did not uh, issue gold coins museums show that they seem to have issued the largest number of coins punch market and early sangam age coins have been found at the tip of the peninsula kushanas issued the largest number of copper coins in northern and northwestern india indo-sassian successors of whom the kushana in lower sin also issued many coins copper and bronze coins were used in large quantities by the rulers of some indigenous dynasties such as the nagas who ruled in central india yadhyas who ruled in eastern rajasthan together with the adjacent areas of haryana punjab and up and by the mitras who ruled in kaushambi mathura avanti why these sites are we have mentioned here copper and bronze coins were used in large quantities by the rulers of some indigenous dynasty that are naga naga uh, yadhyas eastern rajasthan together with the adjacent areas of haryana punjab and up and by the mitras who ruled in kaushambi mathura avanti and ahi chatra barely district in up period roughly between 200 bc and ad 300 evidences largest number of coins and these were issued not only by indian and central asian rulers but also by many cities and tribes in ancient times this phase has the highest number of dyes and molds of the molds for the manufacture of coins perhaps in no other period had the money economy penetrated so deeply into the lives of the common people of the towns and their suburbs as this this development fits in well with the growth of arts and crafts and india striving trade with the roman empire urban growth growing crafts and commerce and the increasing use of money promoted the prosperity of numerous towns during this period important towns in north india such as vaishali pataliputra varanasi kaushambi sravasti hasinapur mathura and Indraprastha Puran Kvila in New Delhi are all mentioned in literary text and some of them are also described by the Chinese pilgrims most of them flourished during the Kushana period in the 1st and 2nd centuries excavations have revealed superior constructions of the Kushana age several sites in Bihar such as chiran pand sonpur and buxar and others in eastern up such as kairadeh and masansa prosperous kushana faces similarly in up town such as sohgaura bhita kaushambi shringa verapur and atranj kera were prosperous rang mahal in rajasthan and many other sites in the western areas throw in Trove in Kushan times, the excavations at Song in Mathura reveal as many as seven levels of the Kushan phase, and only one of the Gupta phase current excavations shows Sachnan Court, 50 kilometers from Lucknow, to be the largest Kushan town in northern India. 
it covers 9 square kilometer and contains many brick houses and copper coins again sites in jalandhar ludhiana and roper are located in punjab and several haryana sites reveal the quality of kushana constructions in many instances gupta period structures were poorly built and made of the used kushana bricks on the wall the material remains from the kushana phase indicate urbanization at its peak this also applies to towns in the shaka kingdom malwa and western india the most important towns was ujjaini as the nodal point of two routes one from kaushambi and the other from mathura it was however also important because of its export of um, agate and uh, carnelian stones excavations show that uh, agate jasper and carnelian were worked on a large scale for the manufacture of beads after 200 bc this was possible because the raw material could be obtained in abundance from the trap bedrock in in the bed of the sipra river in ujjaini towns throw in the shatavahana kingdom during the same period that did under the shakas and kushanas tagartir python danyakataka amravati nagarjunakonda broj sopra arikamedu and kaveri patanam were prosperous towns in western and south india during the shatavahana period several shatavahana settlements some of which may be quarter minus with the 30 walled towns of the andras mentioned by pliny have been excavated in telangana they had originated much earlier than the towns in coastal andhra although not much later than those in western maharashtra decline of towns in maharashtra andhra and tamil nadu generally started in the mid century or later towns prosperous in the kushan and shatavahana empire because they conducted thriving trade with the roman empire india then traded with the eastern part of the roman empires as well as with the central asia towns in punjab and western up throve because the center of kushan power lay in north western india most kushana towns in india lay exactly on the north western or uttarapath route passing from mathura to taxila the kushana empire ensured securely along the roads it demise in the 3rd century delta a great blow to the, these towns same thing happened in deccan end of the shatavahana power together with the ban on trade with india imposed by the roman empire in the 3rd century improved impoverished the urban artisans and merchants archaeological excavations in the deccan clearly suggest a decline in urban settlements after the shatavahana phase end of the chapter we have hearing it chronology from bc 5th century india paid iran a tribute of 320 talents of gold probably extracted from the gold mines in sindh 200 ujjaini exported beads agate and carnelian stones after this time stone was obtained from the bedrock in the sipra river 200 bc to anno domini 250 the years of the shakas kushanas shatavahanas and the first tamil states had flourishing crafts and commerce thriving trade between india and the eastern roman empire 200 bc to anno domini 300 the largest number of coins first century the movement of the shakas pratiharans and kushanas from this time disrupted overland trade anno domini 1st century trade conducted principally by sea and because of the monsoon sailing took less time the knowledge of glass blowing reached india 22 complaints against a costly purchase of paper from the east by the romans 77 the date of pliny's natural history in latin 1st to 2nd century prosperity of towns in north india during the kushana period 1st to 3rd century dying vats in arikamedu and 
திருச்சார்பள்ளி ஒன் ஃபிஃப்டீன் மெஸ்பட்டோமியா வாஸ் கான்குயர்ட் பை த ரோமன்ஸ் அண்ட் மீடிய ரோமன் ப்ரோவின்ஸ் செகண்ட் சென்ச்சுரி இன் மகாராஷ்டிரா புத்திஸ்ட் டிவோட்டிஸ் டிபாசிட்டட் மணி வித் த வேரியஸ் கேர்ள்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹோம் ஆர்டிஷியன்ஸ் ஃபார் தி ப்ரொவிஷன் ஆஃப் ரோப்ஸ் அண்ட் அதர் நெசிட்டிஸ் ஃபார் தி மாங்ஸ் ட்ரேட் பிட்வீன் த நார்த் வெஸ்டர்ன் பார்ட் ஆஃப் தி சப் கான்டினென்ட் அண்ட் தி ஈஸ்டர்ன் பார்ட் ஆஃப் தி ரோமன் எம்பயர் அண்டர் தி குஷானாஸ் தேர்ட் சென்ச்சுரி இம்பேக்ட் ஆஃப் தி எண்ட் ஆஃப் தி குஷான் எம்பயர் ஆன் டவுன்ஸ் ஆன் தி நார்த் வெஸ்டர்ன் ஆர் உத்ராபாத் ரோட் ஃப்ரம் மதுரா டு டக்சிலா இம்பேக்ட் ஆஃப் தி எண்ட் ஆஃப் தி சாத்தவாகன பவர் ஆன் டவுன்ஸ் அண்ட் இண்டோ ரோமன் ட்ரேட் தேங்க்யூ